everybody this is Harmony with Harmony Stitches and welcome to my channel. Here we talk about my crafting journey which usually revolves around cross stitch with some knitting and crochet thrown in here and there whenever whenever it decides to show up. Uh, first off before we get started um, talking about my crafts for the week I just want to thank everyone who um, newly sus subscribed um, is newly watching um, all of my returning subscribers and viewers, I appreciate each and every one of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to hang out with me for a little while while we talk about my crafts. Okay, so this is um, just about mid-March, so we're going to give an update on my WIPCO projects for the month and anything else that I've been working on so far, okay? So there was a couple of days in February after my last video and I had decided to continue working on Winter Tranquility. You, I'm not gonna insert a photo of what this looks like. Um, it'll take up too much storage in the video, but you can go back to the, the previous video to see what it's going to look like. I continued working on this for the rest of February and I do believe I reached about 47%. So the, there's a house in here, but I really think that the bulk of the stitching is all of the snow. So this is just stitched on some light blue, I believe 14 count Ada that I found in my stash bin and with the called for flosses, uh, DMC flosses. So I finished that part, um, I finished February out with this piece. I think I was stitching the tree because I have a, a thread here. So I ended with that and then March 1st came around and I told you that my two pieces were a stitching with the housewives, which I will show you the photo, and acorns by the Prairie Schooler. But the first one is um, pumpkin patch by stitching with the housewives. And here's chart number one. This is actually the bonus chart the one that you get for free by buying the other one. This is 100% complete except for the stems on each of the pumpkins. So remember last time I told you that on the bonus chart and on the purchase chart, they're, they used classic Colorworks Caramel, but on each chart they converted it to a different color. Well, then my mind got all mixed up with that and forgot how to read a chart. And I made these pumpkins um, 841 instead of white. They were supposed to be the white color, which I think I'm using 3865. But there are pumpkins that are this color or around about that color. So I went ahead and left them because I didn't want to tear out an entire pumpkin. Because I started over here. I had the entire pumpkin done. And I actually did the... the see the white stitches in the end? I actually did those that same color on accident as well. So I did rip that out. Um, so I temporarily forgot how to read a chart. Um, so this color that I stitched the pumpkin was supposed to be for the stems. So obviously I wanna make it a different color, but I'm going to wait until both of the charts are complete before I put in the stems because I wanna find a color that goes with all of the other colors used. So that was, um, oh, and, and you know what? These, um, the little single orange stitches that are across the top, they're supposed to be more over here and another one over here, but I kind of, I accidentally skipped those ones for some reason, and I kind of like it the way it is, so I'm not going to put those stitches in. And that's just um, me making a design choice. So there's that one. I finished that one, and then I immediately started the the one that would be considered the paid for pattern. And this is the pumpkin patch, the one on the cover of the photo. And so what I'm doing is um, working on the wheelbarrow. It's a teal wheelbarrow. It's using um, DMC 597. If you use the um, Classic Color Works, it's really tealy. So I'm working on that. I'm just making a little tiny bit of progress, but I hope to have this done by the end of the month because I'm even though the other one's finished, it's like a, a chart finish, right? I can cross that off my list. Oh, and with that too, in my whip parade for the end of 2022, I counted 30 whips. 
Um, the other day I wrote them all down because I want to be able to cross them off of a list when I complete them. I think that's kind of satisfying. So I went and wrote them all the down. I got my whip bin out and I wrote everything down and I actually had 31. I don't know which one I missed or if I just miscounted. I don't really know, but I had 31. I have five finishes for the year already. If I finish this, I'll be have six and um, I'll be on a roll. So my goal is to try to have as many finishes as I have starts. So that way my whip count stays at or below what I started. So I, if I started the year with 31, I want to have 31 at the end of the year. I don't care which ones they are. I just want to stay up on my starts because of my crazy whip go. For those of you that are new here, my whip go is a, I'm doing it a little different. Instead of working on whips, I'm actually doing a new start. And uh, my goal for each of those new starts is 500 stitches. So I got more than enough stitches into that project, but they're both so small. It only took me like two days or so to finish the that chart by stitching with the housewives. So, and some of these smaller charts that I'm doing, my goal is a finish on those. And then I will put my efforts in the following months into some of the bigger ones like winter tranquility. I worked on that after I got all of my other goals for the month completed. And that's how I was able to get to 47%. Um, so same with acorns. Acorns has six little charts. This is by the Prairie Schooler. If you've been here for a while, you know that I really enjoy the Prairie Schooler. When I saw this chart, I really fell in love with it and thought this was a really cute idea that I could use for my home. Um, I don't have a lot of like um, furniture to be able to place things on, but I, I think I can figure something out for this one. Um, so I, I told you last time that I had no idea which one I was gonna start with. I ended up starting with this one down here. And let me dig it out. I have everything in this bag. So I started with the leaves and acorns. This has approximately, give or take for human counting error, 1,400 stitches. And I got this one done in just a couple of days as well. What I was doing is I was working on the stitching with the housewives during the day or at work where there was better lighting in my living room in the evening, in the early morning. I don't have that great of lighting. So I was working on these during those times and on the black fabric, um, it's, sorry, all of this is Monaco, these are Monaco. I tea dyed these and the other is black. Um, so I was working on these in the morning before work and then in the evening when I got home. This took me no time at all. I really think that this only took me like two mornings, two evenings, and then like a th three mornings, two evenings. Let's put it that way. So it didn't take me very long. So then I moved on to the squirrel. He's got five leaves and five acorns. And this actually went a lot faster than I thought it would because I'm like, oh my gosh, that squirrel is huge. He's pretty big, but again, this just took me a couple of days. Um, and I got this done. So that's block number two. But then I got started on the pumpkin and crow which again, that pumpkin kind of scared me, but it flew. It just, it j it took no time. I, and I think I was really excited. So I got that done as well. So that's three. Oh, and all my floss is falling out. So then I started on the cornucopia with all of the gourds and pumpkins. And as you can see, I'm still working on this, but I started this Friday night. I put in that one section on the right of the pumpkin. That's all I had Friday night, and the rest I did yesterday and today, Saturday and Sunday. And I'm not gonna have this finished today, but I'm going to be pretty close because after this, I'm. it's almost dinner time. It's just after 4 p.m. on Sunday. Um, dinner is approaching, but... I'm gonna see how much I can get done of that. So then after that one, I have just two more. 
I have the schoolhouse, which is up here in the corner, and that schoolhouse is pretty solid stitching as well. And then I have the one with the tree and all the acorns with the, the people. So just two more. I kind of left the people for, I'm, I think I'm going to leave them for last because, well, I think I might do them next. And it's because I'm running out of DMC 844 and I just want to know, do I need to, to pull out another skein? I know I have at least one skein. Do I need to pull it out or is it going to be enough? So I think if I do the people um, next, we'll see. we'll see if I have to get out another skein. I think that will help. You know I like to be frugal with my floss. Okay, so those were the whip go, and I'm making great progress on that, and I think that I can have both of these charts done and call a finish by the end of the month. Um, okay, and then we talked about winter tranquility. Now the last one, uh, last cross stitch that I have to talk about is Weimariner, and this is the one that's my dog that you, if you've been here, um, you know the story, but if you haven't been here, um, this is very um, confetti heavy, lots of color changes, lots and lots of colors, um, and this Weimariner, and then the back stitching was crazy. And the back stitching really was meant to do on linen because it's like going through the middle or through the side of the stitches. And so on Ada, it's really difficult. I'm stitching this one on Ada. But I didn't like the back stitching and I didn't think that it would show up. And so I was contemplating doing something else. And during my last video, I said, I'm just going to go with it and just so I can get it done. So I had started a thread back stitching and I decided to finish it. So it went across the bottom and then up the side. So I might be one third done with the back stitching. Um, there's quite a bit more to go and I figure when I felt the urge, pick up a strand and put in a strand and only a couple more of those types of days and this one will be complete as well and then I can cross this off my list. There's, his, there's not a ton, it's just, if any of you don't like backstitching, you know exactly where I'm at here because I don't like it at all. It's fairly difficult and I'm not feeling it. So I have one more project to show you. I have not started my Lady of the Flag stitches yet for the Michigan Cross Stitch Group Challenge. Um, I think... To, I think my number is like 1,200 something stitches. Not a ton. It's like 1,239. If I remember correctly, I may, I'm may i probably wrong. Um, not a ton, but I'm at a spot where there's constant color changing. And getting that many stitches done with that many color changes. I will put some stitches into it this month just to say that I did stitch on it, but I, I don't think that I'm even going to attempt to get the goal this month, and that's fine. I don't put my name into the drawing anyway, um, but um, yeah, I don't think that I'm going to be able to stomach getting to 1,200 stitches done on that just because of where I am. If I was down further on the skirt where there's lots of color blocks, um, you know, bigger blocks of stitches, um, in one color, then, then it would be doable, but not now. Okay, so I told you that I had the urge to start a knitting project and more than likely the blanket, so I did start the blanket. I got four rows done, and it is using this um, Cascade Yarns Pluff, which is discontinued. This is color number one, but I don't know what the name of the color is. I searched online to see if there's any stores that carry this still, I found two, but their colors are very limited. I think one store had like 11 balls of one color. Um, and then the other store had several colors, but not very many balls per color. So I have four rows done and I'm supposed to do per the pattern, seven rows of garter stitch. And I marked the right side. So this is the right side. Here's my dilemma on this though. It's a fisherman's rib. Um, so in fisherman's rib, you're supposed to knit in the stitch below and I, there, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Let me hold this up, but there's not really a lot of, I hope I'm got this on frame. 
there's not a lot of stitch definition because of it being a Chanel, a Chanel yarn. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to execute the fisherman's rib with this yarn. So I have no idea how many I cast on. I think 50 extra, I think 163, 50. It's been a minute since I worked on this. I think I worked on it the first and second of March. Um, I cast on 163 stitches. I kind of measured it out, you know, kind of stretched it out the best I could to measure how long it was. Um, to see the stitch count worked for the fisherman's rib. But I just don't think I'm going to be able to execute the pattern because I'm not going to be able to see it. And considering that every other row is the pattern row, I just don't think it's going to work. So I think I'm just going to make this a garter, um, garter blanket and have it be all squishy. And then that would be easy too, because I'm just, anytime that I feel like it, I can just pick it up and knit a row and then put it back in my bag next to my chair, then I can pick it up and knit a row, pick it up and knit a row. And it won't be that big of a deal. And I won't have to remember like, hey, what, are you on a right side, wrong side? So I don't think that this was the appropriate yarn for that pattern, but you know, that happens sometimes and it's fine. It's still going to make a squishy blanket, just not that fisherman's rib blanket that I wanted. Um, I did notice the reason why I cast on 50 extra stitches is when I looked this up, this Cascade Yarns Pluff on Yarn Sub to get some further information because there's no information on this label. The two websites I looked at didn't have the information I was looking for. I wanted to know what weight this was. And this was different. I think this is a five and the Fisherman's Rib called for a six, a weight six. So it was slightly smaller. My gauge was smaller. So I that's why I cast on more stitches to get the appropriate length or the width for the blanket. So it'll be fine. I think I have five balls of this. So it will, it will make a pretty decent blanket. So that's my knitting. I know I haven't knit in a while, but um, this now this will give me a break on... Because some days... And I don't know if any of you are like this as well. Some days I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, I just cannot put one more stitch in. Okay, but I might be able to knit a row. I could put the cross stitch aside and maybe knit a row. And then I can make some progress on that too. It's just that if I'm idle, if I'm just sitting there doing nothing or even trying to play on my phone, I will fall asleep. So I thought maybe this would help with that. But I keep forgetting that I'm sitting there. <laughs> so... Okay, so the remainder of the month, um, I'm going to put some stitches in Lady of the Flag. I'm going to try to finish all of the blocks and acorns and both of the little patterns in the stitching with the Housewives pumpkin patch. And then I'll work on this maybe if I have time or the desire to pick it up. And then also, if the desire strikes me, I will put in some back stitching in Weimariner. The thing will be done by the end of the year for sure, for sure. There's still plenty of time. Um, it's just since the back stitching is undesirable, then I really have to, you know, be in the mood. So still a great possibility of finishes and progress for the rest of the month. Um, and I am looking forward to that. So I hope that you found something or saw something to inspire you to pick up a languishing whip of your own or maybe to try something new. If you have any questions at all about anything you've seen today, you can comment below or if it's more private, you can send me an email, which you can find in the description box as well. And all of the information about these, and because I probably forgot something, you'll find the details in that description box um, for you every single week. Um, and until next Sunday, bye.